Hello everyone. Um, nature of roots or simply it falls under equation. What is nature of roots? Definition. Before solving an equation, you must do a quick analysis to determine the type of solution to expect. We call that the nature of roots. So whatever you expect to get will simply be we trying to figure out what type of solution are we going to have. And that is that process is called finding the nature of roots. A root is simply a variable you are solving for. So if you are solving for y in an expression or equation, it means y will be root. If you are solving for x, x will be root. So basically, whatever unknown variable we are trying to find the solution of, that will be a root. And before you try and find that root, it's better for you to determine what type of root do you expect. And it's very important for you to understand our number systems that you learned in grade 8. We use a discriminant to get the true analysis. A discriminant is simply um, is determined from the quadratic equation, and I'll show you shortly. This is the quadratic equation, and if you were to use the quadratic formula or write down the quadratic formula, you realize that underneath the square root in the quadratic formula, you will have b squared minus 4ac. That b squared minus 4ac is what we call the discriminant, and it determines, it helps us determine what type of solution we are going to have when we solve that given equation. Now, a discriminant. A discriminant is part of the formula of the contractive formula derived under equations. So this is the contractive formula. You realize that underneath the square root is simply b squared minus 4ac, and that is what we refer to as the discriminant, shown as a small triangle, right? Now, b squared, if b squared minus 4ac is less than 0, meaning that underneath the square root, if we have 0, it means that this root, which is x, will actually have a non-real solution. It will actually have what we refer to as a complex solution or a non-real solution. If whatever is underneath the square root is equal to 0, meaning that we just will be left with minus b all over 2a, it simply means that our solution will be real and obviously it will be equal solution. If it's real, it means that it will be a rational solution as well. Now, if whatever delta is, if whatever we have underneath the square root is greater than 0, but it's not a perfect square, if it's not a perfect square, it simply tells us one thing. For as long as our delta is greater than zero, we will have a real solution, an unequal solution. However, if it is not a perfect square, then our solution will be irrational. Remember I said as long as delta is equal to zero or greater than zero, we'll still have a real solution. However, if whatever delta is, is a perfect square, and is greater than zero, then our solution will be rational. So they are, we will have rational solutions under two circumstances. If delta is equal to zero, or if delta is greater than zero, uh, but it is a perfect square. Note that if a delta is equal to zero, we will have equal solution. If it's not equal to zero, we will have always have an unequal solution and real solutions. However, if it is greater than zero and it is a perfect square, we will have a rational solution which is real and unequal. Now, the sign and value of the discriminant informs you about the kind of solution you are going to have, and I have discussed this above. Note that rational numbers are numbers that can be expressed as a fraction. A fraction must have a numerator and a denominator. Non-recurring decimals are considered to be irrational. I spoke about that. Now let us look at this example here. We will first find this nature of root by finding delta, and this is the formula for delta. Where there is b, I'll substitute minus 5, and where there is a, I'll substitute 2, where there is c, I'll substitute um, 3. Please note that this is b, this is a, 
and that is C. B will be minus 5, you substitute it as it is, and you will get 25 minus 24, and 25 minus 24 is 1, which means that this is a perfect square. Since it's a perfect square, it means we will have real, rational, and unequal solutions. Let us see if this is true. I factorized that equation, and that's what I got when I try and solve for x. I have two x solutions that are rational, but they are unequal in their real solutions. Let us look at example two. Where there's b, I'll substitute four. Where there's a, I'll substitute four. And where there's c, I'll substitute one. And I will simply get an answer of 0. If I get an answer of 0, it means that underneath the root, I'll have 0, meaning that I'll have real, rational, and equal solutions. Let's see if that is true. I'm going to take the same equation, factorize it. That's what I'm going to have. And obviously, I'll have one solution, which is x is equals to minus a half. And obviously, minus half is rational, um, and it is equal because there's only one solution. What about this? I will simply get 4. 4 is a perfect square, meaning that I'll have real, rational, and unequal solution because 4 is a perfect square, and it is greater than 0. Let's see. Factorize that equation x is 0, x is equals to half, and it gives you a real, rational, and unequal x value. What about this one here? If I substitute it, that's what I'm going to get. But I'm getting negative 15, meaning that underneath the square root in my quadratic formula, I will have a negative number. This indicates that I'll have an unreal solution, or simply what we refer to as a complex solution. Now, if I try and substitute that, because I cannot factorize it, if I try and substitute that into my contractive formula and I put it into my calculator, I will simply get an error, meaning that I have no solution, or probably my solution is complex. For which values of r will x squared minus 5x equals to minus r be real? Firstly, find delta. If I find delta, this is what I'm going to have. Substitute b, it's 5, it's actually minus 5. Simplify that, I will simply get 25 minus 4r. Now, for me to have a real solution, it means that my delta must be greater or equal to zero. Please rewind this video to check what I'm talking about. So I'm going to, for us to have real roots, it means delta must be equal to zero. So I'm just going to take delta and um, equate it or make it greater than zero, which is 25 minus 4r will be greater or equal to zero. And then you just solve for r using your inequalities. So r will simply be less than 25 over 4.